Hello students, you're welcome to Prep Class Tutors. So joining you here is Mr. Chima, and I'm your Prep Class Tutor on Chemistry. Looking at your screen, you see that we are going to be solving jump pass questions on chemistry for the year 2019. So I don't know if you've been following us on our videos or if this is the first time you are joining us. If this is the first time you are joining us, you've missed, but you can still go back to our channel by liking our channel to see more of our videos. Because in our previous videos, we've solved jam pass questions on the 2020 chemistry from question 1 to 40. We've also solved pass questions, this same jam pass questions on this year 2019. That's this present one we are about doing. We've solved um, 2019 from numbers 1 to 25. So if you've not seen those videos, I'll urge you to um, like our videos and also you can maybe try as much as possible to go back to check on all those videos because today we'll be looking at questions 26 to 30. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, like I've been saying, do not forget to like our channel, try as much as possible to subscribe to our channel so that you'll be getting much and much uh, for educational uh, content like this. Remember to drop your comment on our comment section box so that we'll know how our videos have been very well helpful to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so having said that, we are going to be solving jump pass questions on chemistry for the year 2019, like I've explained earlier. Uh, we're looking at questions 26 to 30. So now let's start. Question number 26. What current will deposit 3.2 gram of zinc in 2 hours? What current will deposit 3.2 gram of zinc in 2 hours? What current will deposit 3.25 rather 3.25 gram of zinc in 2 hours? What current will deposit 3.25 gram of zinc in 2 hours? Is it 3.25 amps? Is it 2.0 amps? Is it 1.34 amps? Is it 0.6 amps? They're giving us zinc. That's the molar mass of zinc at 65 and one far there's 96,500. This uh, unit is wrong. Though. It's supposed to be 96,500 coulombs. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Okay. Now, obviously, you can see that this question is from electrolysis. You know, Faraday says that the mass of an element is charged through electrolysis is very proportional to points of electricity passing through the electrolyte. So this question is obviously from electrolysis. There is this formula I like using. In short, I invented that formula. That formula is ascribed to me and only me. Because if you check any textbook, you won't see that formula. It is only in this lesson you see this formula. Because I invented it. I'm serious. Now, this formula states that M equals EIT over Farad. Now, before we go into that formula, let me explain one thing. I said that in this electrolytic process, zinc ions, CN2+, plus, will accept two electrons from the cathode and become deposited on the cathode as zinc atoms. You can see the equation of reaction here. Zinc, CN2+, plus, it will accept two electrons. Remember that um, in electrolysis, the cations, the positive ions, are attracted to the words negative electrode. So the cathode is the negative electrode, the anode is the positive electrode. So this zinc, ZN2 plus, will migrate to the cathode. That's the negative, negative electrode. When it gets there, it will draw two electrons from it and become discharged as zinc atom. That's why I see a ZN aqueous. This aqueous means it is in solution. Mm -hmm. It will accept two electrons to become ZN solid. Mm -hmm. To now coat on the cathode as ZN solid. Now, because of these two electrons, you are going to be making use of 2F, 2 Faraday. 1 Faraday is 96,500 coulombs. So for two ions being accepted or discharged to Faraday. If in the case of, like, let's say in the case of silver, Ag+, only one electron is accepted, you use one Faraday. 
In case of zinc here, ZN2 plus, two electrons are that they will use two for the Okay, so using Mr. Chima formulas that says M equals EIT all over farad, where M equals mass of zinc deposited, which is 3.25 gram, which is in the question. E equals molar mass of zinc, which is 65 gram, is in the question. I is the current in amperes, is unknown because they told us to find the current, remember? Mm -hmm. It's a watt current, watt current. T is the time in seconds. This time was being in seconds. They gave us in hours. You have to convert it to seconds, which becomes 2 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. So hours into seconds is 2 times 60 times 60. And that will give us 7,000 seconds. Then your F is your what? 96,500 coulombs. So, but remember, I said since ZN2 plus that's two electrons is being accepted because of this ZN2 plus, you'll be making use of two farad instead of one F. You make use of two F instead of one F. Mm -hmm. That's two farad instead of one farad. So, since it is ZN2 plus, we'll use two farad is two F. Then our formula now becomes M equals EIT all over 2F. Do you understand? So if you make I the subject of formula, you have I becomes 2MF all over ET. So when you cross multiply and divide both sides by E and T, you have 2MF all over ET or 2FM all over ET. So your current I becomes 2 times mass, 3.25 times F, 96,500 all over E, molar mass 65 times the time, T, which we've converted to second, 7,000. Multiply the numerator, you have 627,250. Multiply the denominator, you have 46,800. So divide this by this, you have 1.34 amps. So your answer is 1.34 amps. Very simple. Just always remember to make use of this Mr. Chima's almighty form line for an electrolysis and boom, you just get your answer without all those they are storytelling that you see in the textbooks. Hmm? Question number 27. Neutralization involves a reaction between H3O plus and, sorry for this type, but this should also be H3O plus. This is hydrozonium ion. Mm -hmm. H3O plus N. So now I said that although many of us know neutralization as the combination of an acid with a base to form salt and water. Remember, because of course, you're supposed to know by now that once you hear the word neutralization, it simply means acid and water. You give um, salt and water. You don't titration there. Eh? Mm -hmm. Now, that may not necessarily be the or sure that's not necessarily. Uh, the complete or all the definition of neutralization you must know. You must know that in neutralization, hydrogen ion from the acid combines with hydroxide ion from the base to form water before the metallic and the non metallic ion will now form salt. Do you understand? Okay, so I said that our neutralization can also be defined as a combination of hydrogen ion H. Plus with hydroxide ion OH to form water, which is H2O. Then a salt is formed at the same time. That is the salt when the metal and non-metallic part combines to get filling. Now, also, the relation can also be defined as a combination of oxonium ion, H3O+, plus, with hydroxide ion, OH- minus, to form water. A salt is formed at the same time. So I'm giving you the definition of relation. If you write any of these three in the exam, Good to go. Hmm? But note that in the in aqueous solution, hydrogen ion usually combine with water molecule to form water. So the point here is that this hydrogen ion sometimes combines with um, water molecule to form ozonium ion H3. The ozonium ion we also now combine with hydroxide ion to form further production of water molecule. Sorry for not writing the equation of the reaction for that. So what you must know is that another definition for neutralization is that ozonium ion or hydrogen ion will react with hydroxide ion from water to form water. Mm -hmm. So the correct answer is hydroxide ion. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Question number 28. Oxygen is a mixture of two isotopes, O and O, with relative abundances of 90% and 10% respectively. The relative atomic masses of oxygen is this typo is from JAM. This is the way they typed it in the question box. I read a correction here. Look at what I said. Now, normally, this O and O, there's what we call isotopy. Isotopy is the existence of uh, an element in the same, uh, having the same molecular, uh, having the same atomic number but different molecular mass. Now, you know that oxygen is the eight element, so it has an atomic number of eight. Mm -hmm. And we commonly know that oxygen has a little molecular mass of 16. So, you must understand that oxygen exists in two forms. One has a little molecular mass of 16, and another one has a little molecular mass of 18. But they have the same atomic number of 8, 8. I believe you understand that. Mm -hmm. So, the process whereby an element exists in this form, whereby they will have the same atomic number, maybe 8, 8, 2, 2, 1, 1, but different mass number is known as isotopy. Carbon 2 exists in that form. They have the same atomic number, 6, 6, but one has a um, little molecular mass of 12, the ordinary carbon that we know. And another one has a little molecular mass of 14, but that one is a radioactive carbon. Mm -hmm. So, now, normally, these two isotopes of oxygen, whereby this one has a little molecular mass of 16, in nature, it occurs about 90%. Why this other one that has the molecular mass of 18 occurs in only 10%? So we usually use this to, to determine the main relative molecular mass for oxygen. So for you to do that, the formula says that relative molecular mass equals percentage abundance of one of them, let's say O16 for example, times its molecular mass plus percentage abundance of the other one times its molecular mass. Very simple. Percentage abundance of this one times molecular mass, percentage abundance of this one times um, atomic mass, sorry, not molecular mass, atomic mass, percentage abundance of this first one times atomic mass, plus percentage abundance of this other one time, times its atomic mass. Very simple. Do you understand? So, in a nutshell, we are saying relative molecular mass or relative atomic mass rather, because percentage abundance of O16 times 16. Plus percentage abundance of O18 times 18. So that should give us 90, because this one of course is 90%. That's 90 over 100. You know, percent is over 100. 90 over 100 times 16. This the 16 is gotten from here. 16 plus open bracket. 10% um, the abundance of this one is 10%. That's 10 over 100 times 18. The 18 is also gotten from here. So that gives us 90 over 100 is 0 0.9 times 16 plus, of course, 10 over 100 is 0 0.1 times 18. So 0 0.9 times 16 gives us 14.4 plus 0 0.1 times 18 gives us 1.8. So when you add these two, you get 16.2. So the answer is 16.2. Very simple and interesting. Hmm? Question number 29. Which of the following is not true of metals? Which of the following is not true of metals? You see that they are good conductors of electricity. They are, they are ionized by electron loss. Their oxides are acid, acidic. They have high melting point. Which one is not true? And look what I said. The first one, let's look at the options. These options are what I now translate here. They are good conductors of electricity. That's correct. All metals can conduct electricity. Copper, aluminum, iron, they can allow electricity to pass through them easily. They are ionized by electron loss. Yes, all metals will give out electron and become positively charged. Mm -hmm. Sodium can donate electron to chlorine, become Na plus. Iron can donate electron to oxygen, becomes Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus. They are ionized by losing electron and becoming positively charged. So they are ionized by electron loss. Their oxides are acidic, that's false. 
Metallic oxides are basic. That's one of the uh, chemical properties of metallic oxide that you must never forget. All metals born in oxygen. All metals react with oxygen to form base or alkali. So all oxides of metals are alkaline. They are not acidic. Oxides of non-metals can be neutral or acidic, but oxides of metals are alkaline or basic. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Oxides of non-metals can be neutral, can be acidic, but for metals, the oxides are usually basic or alkaline. They have high melting points. Yes, it will take time for you to heat uh, sodium before it melts or iron, of course. So they have high melting points, 800, 1,500 degrees and so on. They have high melting point. So the one that is not correct is option C. So that is option C. The oxides are acidic, so it's not true. The oxides are actually not basic. Question number 30. Neutral atoms of neon with an atomic number 10 have the same number of electrons as is it oxygen O2 plus CO2 plus K minus Mg2 plus. Now look at what I said here. They're asking us neutral atoms of neon will have atomic number of the same number or have of neutral atoms of neon with an atomic number 10. We have the same number of electron as each of them. Is it O2 plus? I said that oxygen ion exists as O2 minus and not O2 plus. So let's this option is kicked out. There is nothing like O2 plus. Oxygen is O2 minus. Oxygen is a non-metal. CA2 plus, let us see. There is something like CA2 plus. Calcium is a metal. Now, after calcium, C has related the two electrons. This electronic complication changes from 2882. How do we get 2882? Calcium is the 20th element. So, because of that, it has an atomic number of 20. So, if you are splitting 20, the first shell occupies two electrons. The second shell occupies eight electrons. So, we filled two, we filled eight. That's 10. The third shell occupies around eight electrons. How many have we filled? 18, remaining how many? 2, because calcium atomic number is 20. The third shell occupies the last two. Calcium can donate these two electrons to become Ca2+. This electron in the last shell, it can donate it. Mm -hmm. It can donate these two electrons in its last shell to become Ca2+. When it donates this electron in its last shell, its electronic configuration becomes 2, 2, 8. And when you add 2 to 8, it is 18. So making the number of electrons remaining to be 18. Normally it has 20. To donate the last two is at the leaving what 18. But they say it's 10. We are looking for 10, not 18. So option B will not be. Option C. K plus potassium ion exists. They give us K minus. Sorry, K minus. There is nothing like K minus. Potassium ion exists as K plus and not K minus. So this option C is useless too. Option D, Mg2 plus. And I said after Mg2 plus has donated two of its electrons, magnesium is a 12th element. Mm -hmm. After Mg2 plus has donated two of its electrons, this chemical conversion changes from 2882 to 28. Now, since magnesium is a 12th element, if you have if you have an atomic number of 12, so if you are feeling that 12 of its atomic number, first shell. Two electrons, remaining 10. Second share, of course, eight electrons. You fill 10, remaining two. Remember that the atomic number is 12. Mm -hmm. So two plus eight, 10, remaining two. Then the last share occupy the last two electrons. Magnesium can delete these two electrons, just like how calcium can delete these two electrons. So when magnesium delete these two electrons, it becomes Mg2+. Plus. And when it does that, electric combination that changes from 2, 8, 2 to 2, 8. 2, 8. Mm -hmm. So making the number of electrons to be 10 because 2 plus 8 will give you 10. So because of that, the correct answer is magnesium. Mg2 plus will have uh, the same atomic number or the same number of electrons. For the Mg2 plus, we have the same number of electrons with atomic number neon. Mm -hmm. All right, students, we've come to the end of today's section of uh, chemistry with prep class. 
If you look below here, you will see a link. We we'll urge you to use this link to join our WhatsApp group. When you do that, you'll be getting updates and infos on all the videos we have available to you on our YouTube channels. Videos that will really, really help you in blasting or destroying all these questions on why I can any other examination point. So, till you meet again, I still remain Mr. Shima. And it's a good one having you guys here. Bye, and do stay safe.